life that is worthy of emulation. Live a life that can attract somebody. Do you desire to be fruitful? The qualification for fruitfulness is that you must abide in him. the casting down you will announce that there is a lifting up help me help me look at somebody if you will say back to the potter are you ready now of God. This is not a time to struggle. This is not a time for your strength. This is not a time for your labor. This is a time for the potter. When you try it and it appears it's not working. When you fight and it appears you are not winning, you take it back to the potter. You try it on your own and it's as though you're not making headway. What you need to do is to take it back to the potter. Look somebody in the face and say, back to the potter. I didn't hear you. Come on. Look somebody in the face and say, back to the potter. Can you lead me to please here? I feel it in next place. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait. You the rose of Sharon. Oh, say. The of the valley. Oh, yeah, the baby. Now we be now in this way. You are. Hey, I love you. 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 To the potter, wherever you are in next meeting, if you can hear me, you can inhale it. If you can inhale it, you can become it. I'm talking to somebody starting from tomorrow afternoon, testimonies will be meeting testimonies. In the lives and destinies of people, testimony will meet testimony. If the devil is attacking you by mistake, you will recover by correction. I don't care how many demons followed you from your village. Today is your day of testimony. I didn't hear your email like thunder. We started the journey and we did verse 1 and we did verse 2. Right? And at verse 2, where we stopped was when he said to Jeremiah that I want to talk to you. I have something to tell you but I will not tell you that thing until I see you we are at the potter's house. He said to Jeremiah, I have a word for you. There is something I want to tell you. There is an information 
I want to relate to you. There is something I want to make known to you. But I will not do it until I see you at the porter's house. And he said to him in verse 2 that he should go down to the porter's house. And when he get there, that there is something he, God, want to tell him. And I said something on the person before I closed. I said, oh, God was already talking to him by telling him that you need to go to the porter's house. He was talking to him. But he said, I will only ask you now to go to the potter's house but the rest of the information I will give you at the potter's house that is to say to us that where you are located has a lot to do with what God tells you per time there is something God may want to tell you but if you are at the wrong place God does not speak everywhere it is not at every ground that God talks I make both to announce that there are altars that are closed prophetically there are altars that God does not speak there are grounds that God does not speak I came to tell somebody it is high time we tell our generation the truth it is high time we tell our people the truth I don't care who you are I came as a preacher of the gospel I came as a seasoned theologian I came as a prophesying prophet I came as one bearing the mark of God let us tell our people the truth God does not talk everywhere God does not talk everywhere shall I remind you that it is a satanic manipulation for any man that God does not speak to to say that God does not talk I don't serve a deaf God I don't serve a dead God help me tell everyone wherever you find yourself help me tell everyone that care to listen that I do not serve a dead God that I serve a living God if my God is a living God he's a talking God can I get deeper before I get hotter Folks have been deceiving people, telling you lies, hiding under the fact that people are ignorant of the truth, deceiving them and claiming to be right and righteous. How can you ask me to worship a God that does not talk? Listen, listen, listen. How can you tell me that I serve a God and this God is God but he doesn't talk? Somebody may say, no, I didn't tell you that but I'll prove it to you. When you tell me that there can be a time when God will speak to his children, then why did he gather us? But hear me, brother. Don't make mistake. God does not talk everywhere. It is not everywhere that God speaks. Go and read your Bible. God does not talk at all grounds. If you are opportune to find yourself where God talks, stay there. It is better to die in the hand of God than to live in the hand of the devil. I came to tell somebody the truth because back to the potter we need to say the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, I preached the message. As I was reading my Bible, the Bible told me that John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus. My Bible told me that the head of John the Baptist was cut off, not without the knowledge of Jesus, but with his knowledge. Now hear me now. After cutting off the head of John the Baptist, the Bible told me that the, the, uh, uh, the followers of John the Baptist carried his remains without his head, went and buried him. Immediately after burying him, they located Jesus. They went to Jesus and told Jesus that look, the head of John has been cut off. We have buried it. 
But Jesus never answered the word. Jesus left the place. And when he left the place, I began to wonder. I said, does he mean that there is no longer power in the kingdom? Fear gripped me. But what I saw in the next verse was when the people heard that Jesus had gone in into the desert, they followed him. And when they followed him, the next thing I heard was that he healed their sick. So power was still intact. But John died. Then he took my mind back that the best thing that can happen to a man is to hear from God how the journey of your life will go. When it begins to go, you will not bother. But anytime you were thrown into confusion, I remember there was a time when John was alive and in prison. John told his disciples, go to Jesus and ask him what is going on. Because I don't serve a deaf God. I don't serve a dumb God. I serve a God that can talk. I serve a God that is the beginning and the ending. I don't serve a dead God. I serve a living God. Go and ask him what is going on. Is he the Messiah that I talked about or should I wait for another? And he said to John the Baptist that which is written of a man must surely come He said to John, that which is written of a man must surely come to pass. I speak to my sons every day. I said the journey of my ministry will not be the journey of your ministry. Hear from me. Every son in the ministry. It doesn't matter who you are. Every man has his cross to be There, there is nothing anybody can do about it. Uh, 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 there is no shortcut to it. He said to John, that which is written of a man must surely come to pass. He said, when you say that to him, then tell him what you are seeing. Hold on. He said, tell him, tell him that that which is written of a man must surely come to pass. Let him go and find out what is written of him. Brother, there is something written of you. Until you get back to the potter, you wouldn't know what is written of you. And any man living his or her life, outside the knowledge of what is written of him or her, will always live in confusion. That is why you run here, you run there. You jump here, you jump here. That is the reason for frustration. My friend, they relax. God does not talk everywhere. He said... After telling him that that which is written of a man must surely come to pass. Now tell him what you are seeing. Tell him that miracles are happening. Also tell him. Mama, 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 mama. Tell him. Tell him what you are seeing. Tell him what you are hearing. And also tell him that the acceptable year of the Lord is being preached. Tell him that there is sound gospel. Tell him that there is undiluted word of God. Tell him. Tell him that we don't only carry a question that we carry Rema. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him that we understand the rudiments of what we do. Tell him we are gifted and anointed. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him that we have a clear vision. Tell him we have a clear understanding of what God has called us to do. After telling him, then rest your case. This was what Jesus said to him. So when that confusion was about to creep in, then I head on to the fact that the master said, that which is written of a man must surely come to pass. Listen to me now. Anytime your time has come, your time has come. John the Baptist, right inside the desert, he called the Pharisees, the Sadducees. He called them brood of vipers. Nobody touched him because it was not yet time. But when the time came, a little girl demanded for his head and his head was cut off. That which is written of a man. But let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. The best thing that will happen to you is for you to know that there are places that God talk. There are people you will associate with. Heaven will 
glorious for you. He said to Jeremiah, oh, listen, I'm still talking the Bible. He said to Jeremiah, I have something to tell you, but you must get to a place where I will tell you. Except you get to the potter's house, I will not talk to you. But when you arrive at the potter's house, I will convey my message to you. Now hear me now. And I said, that there are places God does not talk. And any man who belongs to a place where God does not talk, we have no choice but to tell you that God doesn't talk. Because there is no way a blind man can describe light. The only thing a blind man can describe is darkness. That everywhere is dark. When you ask him, you are an old man, what is your experience? He will tell you that everywhere is dark. Don't you move around anyhow. You will stumble and fall because that is what he can see. Some persons will tell you that God does not talk. The reason they tell you that God does not talk is because where they are, who they are, God doesn't talk to them. I have many men of God as friends. And listen to me. I'm talking to folks wherever you are. I don't care from where you hear the sound of my voice. I'm the carrier of the prophetic mandate of the God of talking to you. I am a sound theologian. I want to tell you Bible. I have friends in the ministry who have been in the work for 30 years, 35 years. And they say it to me boldly that I have not heard from God any day. It is possible for you not to hear from God because not every man is called to do the same thing. But there are men that hear from God and this is one. Oh yeah, hold on. I said something I must explain because if I don't explain it it would be or like what did he say I said there are people you will cleave to there are people you will associate with and the heaven will close for you God will stop talking to you I prove it to you the Bible said when Hosea died Isaiah saw vision Anybody that must die for you to hear from God, let the person die. Anybody that must die for your tomorrow to be in view, let that person now hear me. There are people when you associate with them, you will not hear from God anymore. Let me blow your mind a little. And let me make clear some theological arguments to you. Before Isaiah got connected to King Hosea, he was seen. Huh? He was a renowned prophet. But when he began to eat at the table of the king, when he began to relate so closely with the king, his vision closed. Because there are people you will get so close to. Heaven will close for you. That's one. Number two. Son, there are people when you get close to them. If there be a course in your life, that course will be suspended for you to progress. By closeness. There are people, when you get so close to them, without eating, your skin will be shining. There are people, when you get connected to them, you can never be stranded. Can I prove it to you? Hear me, child of God. It's not everywhere that God talks. It's not to everyone that God speaks. Can I say this to you? My Bible said that as long as Lot followed Abraham, Lot was prospering. Not because Lot carried Etequel, but because Abraham carried Etequel. By the Etequel upon Abraham, Lot is bound to prosper. Can I get 
deeper before I get hotter. It's all over me now. I feel like preaching to folks. I feel like talking to somebody. Your destiny is pushing me to talk. Hear me as I speak the word of God. Ah! Don't make a mistake. The Bible said that Lot began to prosper. Everything about Lot was increasing. That he became so rich and wealthy that he walked up to Abraham and said, The riches are too much now. It's so much so that nobody can differentiate, nobody can distinguish between your own wealth and my wealth. So we got to divide. You will go your way, and I will go my way. And Abraham looked at him and said, Is that what you want? He said, Yes. Abraham said, That's fine. Abraham said, Oh, yeah, I am your master, but I will not choose first. You choose. It is not about the ground, it's about the man. It's not about where you are located. I preach in Abuja and I see men of God ask me, Where do you come from? And I say, I come from Abba. And they say, What are you doing in Abba? And I look them in the face. Is there anything you can do in Abuja that I cannot do from Abba? in Lagos and I see men of God ask me what are you doing in Abba? Abba is a minus and I said to them it is not about location it's about our location is there anything you have in Lagos is there anything you can do in Lagos anything 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 Can I say the truth for, to you one more time? Talk to me. Can I be sincere to you? Uh, oh yeah, hold on now. Abraham said to Lot, Okay, son, you need us to divide because you think you have arrived. You know, there are things that happens in the life of people when you are enjoying under a grace. Lord said, let me go my way. I got some properties now. I'm blessed now. Let me get separated from you. And Abraham said, that's all right. You know what? If you choose left, I go right. If you choose right, I go left. And my Bible said that Lord looked. He looked and he chose the place that is greenish. He chose the place that is beautiful. He chose the place that looked fatter. But there is something he didn't know. Hear me, child of God. Things are not always the way they look. He chose using his optical eyes. But can I say this to you? There is a way that she made right unto a man. But the end thereof is destruction. I will never follow that way. I will not follow the way of destruction. Somebody release me. I need to talk. I got a word in my mouth. I got a word for my generation. I got a word for my people. I got a word for my speech. I got a word in my time. Okay. Oh yeah, hold on. I need to preach it now. Hold on. And Lot chose. Where he chose was a beautiful land. The land of Sodom and the land of Gomorrah. And Abraham said to him, God bless you. And he left. Ladies and gentlemen, he had this one. When he was living, he left with all his wealth. But hear me now. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. When you cut off from me. Now hear this. When you cut off the first time, the day you cut off the branch, the leaves will not die in one second. The leaves will still be green. 
but the branch is out from the root. Now hold on. It will still be green. And you think you're still shining. And you think you're still there. You wouldn't know you are now water on the throne. But with time, the leaves will begin to change color. And they will not only change color. After changing color, they will get dry and they start falling off. They, they all will not fall off one day. You didn't hear me. Now, it will start falling off. And when it starts falling off, I said they all will not fall in one day. It may take moons, but they will be falling off. They will be falling off. When you look at it, you still see leaves remaining there. And if you are not careful, you will still be believing and hoping that one day things will get better. But you do not know that Jesus said, cut off from me. You can do but nothing. Listen, when you cut off from him, you will not stop doing. You are doing. But what you are doing is nothing. What does it mean to do nothing? To do nothing is to labor in vain. To do nothing is to work without pay. I, I don't know if I'm talking here. To do nothing is to work without a reward. There are many listening to me now. You have been doing nothing. Can I talk? You are doing, but you are doing nothing. You are working, but you are working nothing. You are laboring, but you are laboring nothing. Why? Because you need to find yourself somewhere. When Lot was off from Abraham, he didn't take time. The next thing that was knocking on his door was death. Not just death for him, but death for the whole of his generation. But hear me now. They do not live in the same place. But God will not destroy the other side without coming to tell the man that is at the other side. He didn't tell the man that was on ground. But there is somebody God has to tell because not everybody hear from God. The same blood that was running in Abraham was running in Lot but the same covenant that Abraham had was not the covenant that Lot had we may have the same calling we may claim to serve the same God we may be preaching the same message we may be carrying the same size of Bible but brother our grace is not the same now hear me you will be making a mistake when you stay in your end and because you can't hear God you say God does not talk Lot was at Sodom and Gomorrah death was knocking on the door he didn't know Abraham was taking a rest God showed up met him one on one and Abraham said come enter my house uh, and they said no we are on a journey Abraham said stop if I have found favor in your sight you need to enter my house and take a drink and not just a drink I will have my wife make pepper soup for you that is why to marry a wife that is a good cook is important because you won't know when you feed angel you, when, you, when you carry some men of God into your house and you feed them well you will hear speaking in tongues that they have never spoken over the years you will hear something like matutu teketete uh, let me leave that one there. Let me leave that one there. Now hear me. Abraham said, if I have found favor in your sight, you will enter my house. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when I followed biblical exegesis among the people that visited, I discovered that not every one of them was angel. One of them there accepted worship. And no angel accepts worship. For him to accept worship. And listen to me now. He didn't talk like a messenger. He talked like the giver of the message. 
because what he told Abraham was by this time next year I will come back how did he know he will come back because he didn't talk like if they send me I will come he said I will come back because I'm sure that I am the message of the messenger Can I get deeper before I get hotter? <laughs> hold on, hold on. I will soon push it. Now hear me. They came to Abraham. Abraham. After they finished eating and they were about to go. Ah, they said to Abraham, but it is going to be a sin unto us if we go and do what we are about to do without telling Abraham. Let's tell him. Hey! Let's tell him. Let's tell him. Abraham said, what could that be? And they said, we are on our journey now. We are sent here to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham said, no. The last time I remember that my stubborn son, Lot, headed to Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham said, no, let's talk. He went into negotiation with God. And Abraham began to tell God, if you see 50 people in the land that fear the Lord, will you still destroy the land? God said, no. Abraham said, okay. Uh, what if you see 40? What if you... Abraham began to negotiate with God? And somebody would ask, he was insulting God. He wasn't insulting God. It's a privilege. Not everybody enjoys it. What did I come here to do now? I have a privilege. It's a rare privilege. I will stand you up now. I will negotiate your matter. I will negotiate your matter. I will negotiate it. It is my right. Can I push it now? Uh, can I push it now? Abraham began to negotiate with God. Abraham began to do like he was joking with God. He came down and came down until he said, what about 10 people? Is this so in your Bible? Yes, now listen. Somebody will say, what, what is Abraham doing? Does he know it was God he was talking to? How can he be saying all this to God? Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege. He said, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. Now hold on. Now hold on. It's a privilege. Abraham has it. There is nothing anybody can do about it. How do I mean? I prove it to you. In the book of Isaiah, he said, come, let us argue the matter. In some translations, he said, come, let us reason together. Am I talking to you now? He said, come, let us reason together. Do you know that upon this house now, even if, even if it has been confirmed that anybody is going to die, I still have the spiritual right to step into the matter. In the case of a nation, God said to Moses, Moses, I will give you a privilege information. These people are not your people. They are my people. These people are not your children. They are my children. This nation is not your nation. They are my nation. Moses, I strike a deal with you. Because I carry you of high esteem as my servant, I want to give you a privilege information. I want to kill all these people. After killing them, through you, I will raise another generation. Moses said, God, this is a lie. Say, God, you will not do it. God said, what do you mean? He said, God, listen. If you do it, they will say, who will say when everybody have died? Now, listen to me now. If you laugh too much and you touch my heart with your laughter, I will change your life. If you dance and I like your dancing style, I can change your life. These are the things they don't like about me. But I wish, I wish you know your Bible. I wish you understand the word of God. I wish you know what the Bible said. You may not like me, but brother, don't you hate grace? Anytime you hate grace, you are inviting disgrace. I'm getting close to it now, oh, but I don't want to get there yet. I want to talk about the bottle. I want to talk about the bottle. They are taking me there. They are taking me there. Abraham began to argue with God. And it was not that Abraham was insulting God. Abraham wasn't insulting God. 
he was not insulting God. He was only making use of the privileged opportunity given to him by God. But that opportunity is not given to everybody. I prove to you that God does not talk to everybody. God hears everyone but doesn't talk to everyone. I have also proven to you that there are people you will be with. Heaven will close against you. Has that been proven beyond reasonable and unreasonable doubt? Okay, secondly, I said God does not talk to everybody. My Bible said to me that there was a day the God who created all men sent his prophet and he said, go and tell a king, O oh king, put your house in order, you will surely die. The prophet went to the king and said, O oh king, thus saith the Lord, put your house in order, you will surely die. The prophet, after speaking to the king, he left. The king turned and fixed the wall according to the Bible and began to talk to God. And the king was talking and crying unto God and say God you are not an unjust God God please look at this look at this look at this look at that after the king talked to God what he was saying to God God was hearing God wanted to reply the question became why didn't God reply to him he was the one that spoke to God God wanted to reply him God spoke to the prophets and say go back somebody has spoken to me but he doesn't have the ear to hear me I had him but he can't hear me he doesn't have what it takes to hear from me he spoke to the prophet and say go back remember that what the king said to God the prophet did not hear God have answered the king but the king was still crying now listen, anytime you are in a place where you can't hear from God, you cry more than you should cry. You overstay in your case. The prophet showed up and said, oh yeah, can you stop? Turn. King said, okay. Thus said the Lord. You will not die like that again. I have added another 15 years. You hear? The king will say yes. But listen. Does he make clear to you that God does not talk to everybody? Is it clear to you now? God does not talk to every man of God. He is God of every man of God. But does not talk to every man of God. Every servant of God, hear me now. Talk now, do Abiala. You may not like me, but you can do nothing. I'm anointed by the Holy Ghost. I know my Bible. God does not talk to every man of God. You are a man of God, but God does not speak to every man of God. How and what do I mean? And let me tell you this. Your title does not make you a one that God speaks to because God is not a respecter of anybody. I give you a practical example from the Bible. I know you will believe the Bible. Even if you don't believe any other person. I don't know from where you hear the sound of my voice. God does not talk to every man of God. And if God doesn't talk to you, don't tell people that God does not talk. Oh, you hear me now? Eli was a high priest. Eli was alive. Eli had his biological sons who by birth and training were Levites. They grew from being Levites to becoming priests. Because the sons of Eli were accepting and making sacrifices unto the Lord. And the only person that was permitted to do such is a priest. Their father was a high priest. The children were priests, the two sons of Eli, Hophini and Phinehas. Both of them were priests, alive, walking. But that's a little boy 
who was not yet a priest but he was a priest in training but God is a respecter of no man he was lying down on the altar of God God did not talk to Eli God did not talk to Phinehas God did not talk to Hophni God came to Samuel and God called him Samuel 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 stood up and ran to Eli and said master you are calling me Eli said no I didn't call you go back to sleep he went again and God did not call Hophni Hophni he didn't call Phinehas Phinehas rather God called Samuel Samuel yet again and he ran back to Eli Eli said I'm not calling you go back and when he came the third time Eli said to himself I believe God must have changed his mind God must have chosen what he want to do I am but a man nobody can stand on the way of God he chooses whom to talk to he selects whom to use he selects whom he will relay his message to and he said son go back and sleep he, if he call again the person who is calling you is higher than myself and higher than yourself he is the God that we serve he is the owner of the altar he is the owner of the sanctuary he is the beginning and the ending he is the owner of the work go back lie down to sleep when he call again answer him say oh lord speak for your servants and he went back to sleep god came again he didn't call Eli. He didn't call his two sons. He called on the little boy. And when he called on the little boy, the little boy Samuel said, Speak, Lord. My question becomes, why didn't God start talking at the first time? Hear me. When God call you, he will wait for you to answer. Because God does not uh, can, can, I, can I say it how I feel it? God does not do a one-way communication. God does not behave like MTN. God does not behave like a tisalat. If a tisalat, if their machine call you, the machine will just be talking and not ready to hear you. Is it true or false? But look at how God communicates. He will talk to you and wait for your reply. When he call you, he's waiting for you to answer. And not just answering. He's waiting for you to ask him to talk to you. Because God has made you a free moral being. Right now, listen to me. God will speak to me about you. But I am not under compulsion to talk to you. I will talk to you if I like. Oh, that's the truth. I will talk to you if I like. If I don't like, I will shut my mouth. God is not going to bend my mouth. Are you still here? But hold that for another day. I will clarify you another day. But now listen. Listen to where I'm going. I said God doesn't talk to every man of God. Why? Ladies and gentlemen. In, by position. Eli was the high priest. Is it true? If it's in our time. Bishop. In fact Pope. Because he was the high priest at that time. Okay? But God does not go by title. He didn't talk to him. His sons were priests. He didn't talk to them. But God decided to speak to Samuel. And there is something that happened in that passage of the scripture. That if not that God is a true God, that thing shouldn't have been written there. You know what happened? Eli went to Samuel and said, Samuel, if you lie to me, God will punish you. Tell me everything God told you. Come. It's, 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 it's in the Bible. Tell me everything God told you. That means Eli was keen to hear from God, but God said, I won't talk. Eli was hungry to hear from God, but God said, I will not talk to you. He went and spoke to a little boy, and the little boy took time. And anytime God begins to speak to you, you become on top. 
Why will you be on top? Because you are hearing what others do not hear. And you know what it brings your way. It makes men jealous you. It makes men hate you. It makes men talk evil about you. It makes men want you dead. It makes men criticize you. But no matter what they do, anytime God begins to talk to you, you become a seer. Okay. Have I convinced you now that God doesn't talk to every man of God? Can I push forward now? All these things are in the Bible. Is it clear to you now? Eh? That God doesn't talk to every man of God. Come on, somebody talk to me now. Okay. That happened in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus gathered his disciples. And Jesus said to them, who do men say that I am? They said, some say you are one of the prophets. Some say you are like, some say you are this, some say He said, okay, who do you say that I am? Every other apostle went into silence because they do not know who he is. Ladies and gentlemen, something happened. A man called Simon said, excuse me. A man said, Excuse me. Ah, everybody turned around. Ladies and gentlemen, people like educated Matthew was there. People like John, the beloved of Jesus, was there. It is not about your position, it is not about your qualification, it is not about what you know and who you know. A feature man say, Excuse me. This is a feature man who could not write. The book of Peter that you see in the Bible was not written by Peter. Somebody else wrote it for him. Peter was talking and somebody was writing because Peter didn't know how to write. But when the time came to who do men say that I am, Peter said, excuse me. All of us have been sitting down here but some people have gone above others. He said, excuse me. The master said, and yes, he said, you are the Messiah. Jesus turned around and said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You people are 12 in number, but no other person had the privilege of digging deep into communicating with my father. How can I be here? And you are receiving information from the father. Therefore, listen to me. Anything you think you are, destiny, when destiny begin to call your name, it starts from the beginning. I was not surprised when the master turned around and said to Peter, Peter, you shall be the leader. When you are restored, restore others. Why will it be Peter? Why will it be Simon? It happened from the beginning. Simon said, you are the Messiah. I, there is something I carry that others do not carry. There is something I am that others are not. With these points of mind, I make it clear to you that God does not talk to every man of God. Is it clear to you now? If you want to clap, clap now. Is it clear to you that it is not everywhere that God speaks? Huh? In the Old Testament, the ladder of God is not everywhere. The ladder of God remains upon the land called Bethel. It is the place of the altar. When the man of God got there, he took up a stone and laid his head. When he was running away from his brother, the Bible says he saw a ladder standing from that ground up to heaven and he saw angels in his dream ascending and descending and what does he mean they are bringing message and taking back message that ladder does not exist everywhere child of God I make bold to tell you I want to provoke some men now I make bold to tell you that in Toknadu family the ladder is here are ascending and descending 
because they will carry information and then they will carry information from God here and then they will carry from here back to God because it's not a one way co 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 communication he talks to me and I talk to him what did I come to do now any moment from now we will enter into your matter I'll bring you up I will say no oh lord no this one it will not go like this it will not let it go like this and and listen and when i say it so the next thing you will hear is settle 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 now hear me when you hear settle 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 the people say oh yeah see now why is he shouting settle they don't know their bible his words are settled in heaven before the foundation of the earth hey! And they say, why is he talking like this? How can he be talking like that? Brother, I am talking the way I'm talking. Because before he left here, he told me that whatever I bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever I lose on earth is... Can I tell you some more? But hear this one. It doesn't exist everywhere. It is not everywhere. What was the offense of Jeroboam? That God became angry with him. When Jeroboam and the Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when the son of Solomon Rehoboam became king in Israel, he was only left with two tribes. And the nation of Israel gathered and they brought Jeroboam and said, Come and be our king. Jeroboam became the king of the ten tribes. When he became the king of the ten tribes, he became threatened because the temple of God is only in Jerusalem and it was that place that they all go to worship. So in during the time of worship, if anybody want to hear from God, his ten tribes, all of them will go to Jerusalem to go and worship. He sat down and reasoned. He said no. If these people keep going there to worship, one day Rehoboam will convince them. One day Rehoboam will deceive them. That is the problem of the church of today. I want to talk to pastors. I want to talk to folks. You want to keep your members and because you don't want them to go and see the truth you tell them that God does not talk. You tell them that the truth does not exist. That was what Jeroboam did. Jeroboam said I will not let them go to the temple to worship. If they go to the temple to worship, Rehoboam will one day confuse them and they will decide to submit themselves under the Rehoboam. Therefore, what am I going to do? I will build a tabernacle. I will build a church. I will build a place of the altar in my own land so that when they want to worship, they will come here and worship. And God said, how dare you give me a place? Heaven is my own. Earth is my own. I choose a place. I choose a man. I choose a place. I choose a man. It is me that we choose a place where my presence will dwell. And not you. So God does not choose everywhere. It is not in every church that God is. David wanted to build God a house. God said to David, thank you for desiring to build me a house, but don't build it. If you build it, I will not live in it. Because it is not in every house that man build and call church that I, God, go to reside. I choose where to reside. With these few points of mine, I make clear to you that God does not talk everywhere. Ah! Somebody holla back to the water. Now, the children of Israel wanted to make sacrifice to God. And they said to their captivator, we want to go and worship God in our land and in our tabernacle. And he said, I will give you everything you need to worship your God. Worship him here. 
They say no. We cannot worship our God in a strange land. We cannot sing the Lord's song in a strange land. There is a place where we must go to sing the Lord's song. That's a place. We will not sing the Lord's song everywhere. There is a place. Did you hear me now? Yes, sir. There's a place. Jesus was getting ready to be crucified. He chose few of his disciples and said to the remaining ones, wait for me. And he took them. And the Bible said he took them to a mountain. He took them somewhere to the mountain of transfiguration. He took them to a place apart. He took them to where he did not take others. Because it is not everywhere that the Lord speaks. When they got there, it was time to speak. Why? It was time for Jesus to collect the formal and the latter. It was time for Jesus to collect the, the authority uh, of the Pentateuch and to collect the authority of the prophetic and now hear me Moses was carrying that of the Pentateuch and and uh, and Elijah was carrying that of the prophet now hear but there is only one place they will come they will not come everywhere when Jesus got there with few of his disciples when they arrived there ladies and gentlemen at that place Moses landed Elijah landed Jesus was in place when you see when Moses came Moses said we know that your time is up there was something I took up when I was going I took the Pentateuch I didn't hand it over I took, I took the journey of the beginning of man. I didn't hand it over. Moses was born in Exodus, but he wrote Genesis without the informative information of a man. Nobody told him. He carried the, the Pentateuch and he said to Jesus, I am here to, 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 to submit the Pentateuch. Take And now listen. No disciple that went with him had the capacity to see what transpired between him and the Moses and Elijah. Why? The Bible said that the glory of God was so much in the place that it was shining into their eyes that they could not look. They could not see. They bent down their head and they shouted we may not know what is going on but we saw Moses. We saw Elijah. We saw Moses. We saw Elijah. But that is all we can say. Jesus, let something be done here. Let us build three tabernacles here. One for you. One for Moses. And one for Elijah. Let's build it here. Because this place is a special place. That is why it is not every ground that you build church. Okay. And there, Moses came. Elijah came. Elijah said, you understand how my journey went? Take. This is the office of the prophets. And Moses said, take. This is the Pentateuch. And Jesus appeared. And Jesus said to his disciples, he broke bread and he gave them. Eat this, all of you. This is my body. It is the body of the new and everlasting covenant. It is the body of the new and everlasting covenant which will be shared for you 
and for all so that sins may be forgiven do this in memory of me from today when you do it don't remember Moses when you do it don't remember Elijah in memory of me he finished with that and my bible said he took the cup and he gave them wine he said take this all of you and drink from it this is my blood the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant everyone in this house hear me clearly if you ever met a man who closed you up from hearing and receiving from God today I plead the mercy of God over your life if you sat under a pastor under a priest under a reverend under anybody who does not hear from God and he closed you up from hearing from God and communicating with him and made you an enemy of prophecy and cloaks the prophetic for you this morning I plead the mercy of God for you back to the potter are things scattered around you we are back to the potter for correction I don't know for how many years you have suffered stagnation upon this altar in this program back to the potter I correct it now Hala amen and receive it I correct it now Bible believing mission incorporated the dwelling place of the God of talk and truth. This sister here now, she has been married now for 18 years. The mother in law said to her, don't marry my son if you marry my son you will be here like a bed that will not bear fruit for 18 years she's been carrying something in her stomach that looked like stone she's gone for text they didn't see anything 2 years after her marriage 16 years ago she stopped seeing her messes. For 16 years now, she does not miserate. She has been to places. She has seen doctors upon doctors. But it is not their calling. For 16 years, you have not seen your messes. But between today that I talk to you, to nine months' time, you will be a mother of a child. By this, I suspend the protocol of men. What am I doing? Back to the potter. The potter is the mother of your life. The potter is the one that molded you into who you are. My friend, keep quiet. I come with prophecy in my mouth. By the time I am through with you now, your life will begin to shine and glitter. Those of you who have been struggling with life, in the next 45 minutes, I release a prophecy over your head. Everything about your life will change. Somebody holler amen and receive it. Against the words of your mother-in-law. 
I don't want you to miserate. Or to home. Greet your husband. Come out. Be pregnant. The stone in your stomach has 12 seconds to disappear. Hold on, press your stomach. Press your stomach. Next five months, four months, come again with the load. Amen. Come and show us it increase. Amen. Go. Amen. Madam, do you believe in the power of God? Yes. You were so excited and you are happy. Yes. You even wanted to go and sit down now. You thought I had finished praying with you. But I have not spoken yet. No, you have a daughter. Yes, sir. Who happened to be the only daughter among four children. Yes, sir. You have three boys and one daughter. No, daughter. And that daughter senior the three boys. Yes, sir. He's married to a medical doctor. Yes, sir. Who is practicing at Calabar. He named his hospital after the mother Mary Jane. But right now, another person is running the hospital because your son-in-law, the husband to your daughter, is in chains for no reason. He came out from the theater as he was washing his hands. He started losing his tie. That was all. But now, what happened to him? His friend and colleague, both of them went to school together. And that one became a doctor just like him. He became successful and decided to bring that one into his hospital to come and become an assistant doctor. That one felt I am from the land. He is not from the land. He's from Akwa Ibo. Yes, sir. How can he come into Calabar? That is my own father's land. And become a big man. While I am a hungry man. He decided to set that for him. And put it right on top of the soap. That he will use to wash his hands. He collected the soap as he's watching his hand. He was watching off his brain. Okay, you don't know what is happening to you. Your life is scattered. You are under a demonic influence. I'm sorry you are a pastor. But can I talk to you? Brother, this is a time that until and unless the truth is told, many people will remain the way they are. Oga, you don't know what is happening to you. I'm sorry, I want to call things by their names. There's a demonic influence on you. Instead of gathering your family, you are scattering without knowing it. And if you are asked to tell how it happened, you cannot tell. Yes. I'm sorry, I want to tell you the truth. I am a prophet of God. Can I be plain to you? Yes, sir. In this church, you have one of the best wife. You. Not because she's here. Yes. You know it's the truth. 
if other wives do to their husband the way she does to you many men will amount to something yes. but sir the truth of the matter is that what is controlling you you cannot tell she's planning for a way to move the family forward you want to plan but you end up scattering it I'm sorry do you believe you need help you need help. I need help. Do you need help? I need help. Until that help is done. Now listen, if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the writers do? Listen, most times her heart wants to fail her. Most times she wants to get angry. Most times they want to misunderstand you. But what they do not know is that even you don't know what is happening to you. Exactly. She will give you money with good plan on what to use the money for. You will waste it. After the money finish, you will be angry with yourself. Yes. But you will stay there. She will go and struggle and struggle and bring another one. Sir, you need help. I need help. I just want to tell you but very few. I don't want to go into deep ones. But does this tell you that I know what I'm talking about? Yes. Go to the altar. Let's go back to the potter. Wherever you are here, if anything had scattered in your life, today, the potter will put it back again. Bible believing mission in the dwelling place of the God of talk and truth. I want to give prophecy in capital letter. This is back to the potter. They should call me names, I don't mind. Two minutes right inside the hospital now. We are Dr. Apan is sleeping. The same thing he did to your son-in-law will fly like a bird. Perch on his head. His head will scatter. The same bed will go straight to Aquaibom State where they have taken your son-in-law to put him in chains and he's using his teeth to eat his his lips the same power will get there and perch on his head and his head will come back he will ask himself what is happening to me bright young man sound he will come back to normal when he come back to normal tell him that you came here and that Tokunadu said let him make our time between now and the next one month look for me anywhere okay. let him see me okay, for what is pursuing a man does not stop till you stop it but now what I said is done okay, settle Amen. settle Amen. settle Amen. This is back to the potter. The Lord will restore you. Amen. He will bring you back. Amen. I want you to support your wife. Did you hear me? Yes. Your children can go to school. Amen. Don't go against it anymore. Support them. It is not easy to find a wife who would say, let the children go to school. She is suffering. She is standing for hours. Laboring. Are you aware? I'm aware. Support her. My God will bless you. Yeah. He will bless you. Yeah. Your labor in life will not be in vain. Yeah. I bless you with the blessings of heaven above. You have said your children can go to school. Yes. I stand as a prophet of God 
and I say same with you, they will Amen. go to school. Amen. You have decided to make yourself a home builder. You did not decide to behave like some wasteful women who will stay and want their husband to do everything. She has labored for you to find something doing. She has labored. I know a lot. I don't want to talk too much. But please, come and see me in the office. But I speak now. That spirit that has been making you waste and scatter, it is out of you now. Amen. When you keep money, after some time you can find it. You have used it. I don't want to call anything by name yes, because of what you do. Yes, but I know. You know that place. Yeah. Yes, God bless you. I'm a senior prophet. Yes, there is one goat in you people's house now. That goat is very old but the instruction your father left before he died is that nobody should kill the goat but the goat is very old now hear this your father told your mother and told your elder brother that this goat must not be killed that you people should make sure you feed the goats and feed the goats the day the goat on his own will die that nobody should kill the goat and when the goat die that they should bury the goat like a human being was that the instruction yes, sir. and the goat is in the house they are feeding this goat the goat has become very old but I will kill that goat on your behalf now don't tell me anything As long as that goat is alive, everyone in that family will be behaving like goats. None of them will amount to anything. None of them will get anything in life. As long as that goat is alive, every one of them will remain at the same level. Every one of you, none of them struggles. Everybody is taking life the way they see it. Because they are behaving like goats. If you do business with them and you eat their money like a goat, they will go and sit down. Sorry, if, you, if you collect what belongs to them like goats, they will walk away. Listen. If there be a mystery in your family that is keeping everybody down, upon this mountain, Back to the potter. I release a word of prophecy. I release a word of prophecy. That thing must be corrected now. That thing must be corrected now. There is something God said I should pray for now. If you are a woman here and there is something happening in your family that everyone who marry must have issue. Everyone who marry must have problem in their marriages. And that is what is been happening in the family. And it is happening to everybody. God is asking me to do this one. If you are here, from the first to the last, I correct that thing. Amen. Young man, look at me. In the next 30 minutes, that goat will fall. Amen. It's very big. Yes, sir, sir. But it will just fall. Amen. It will die. Amen. What is holding all of you will lose you. Amen. Amen. That is the reason up until now you are not married and you don't care. The one who senior you is not married and is not in a hurry. Everybody's just going. No problem. 
But now, as that goat will die, all of you, you begin to take your place in destiny. Amen. Settle. Amen. Settle. Amen. Settle. Bible believing mission incorporated the dwelling place of the God of talking and truth. Your family property that have been seized from you people that has been causing problem in the family. That problem from now will receive another kind of problem upon the problem. All of you here. Prophesy to you. Your eyes will see the favor of God. This is back to the potter. Today, every door that was closed against you, I forced that door to open. I force that door to open. Any power of death that has been hovering over your head. This morning, I arrest it by power. I arrest it by power. You will not die. Nobody will die. You will not die. Nobody will die. You will not die. Nobody will die. Lift your voice and holler, amen. Amen. It has happened three times. This one that is about to happen, if it happened now, it will be the fourth one. For you to have married three times, and lost three marriages and this one you just married you are also about to lose that is making it the fourth one can I pray for somebody now yes. my dear listen to me stop crying I don't like those tears I understand you, but I don't like those tears. I don't make people cry. I make them laugh. I understand your tears, but I don't need them. Four! Marry the first one. The man is alive. But the marriage didn't work. I'm not talking about propose. I'm not talking about courtship. I'm talking about marriage. She has married three and lost three marriages. The three men, no one died. They are alive. But wake up and say they are not marrying again. And what is the problem? A spiritual husband will not let any man who marry her rest. And the present husband now is saying you gotta go. And the spiritual husband does not respect anybody. The spiritual husband does not respect you because of whatever you say you are. Somebody create space here. I'm looking for somebody. Come here. Spiritual husband. Spiritual husband. Stand up, my dear. Stand up, my dear. Spiritual husband. That is what scattered your life from the beginning. Growing up, such a pretty lady. Life was so organized. Men were rotten. Spiritual husband. Spiritual husband. Yes, daddy. He did not allow you to enjoy your marriage. Even this last one you married, spiritual husband didn't allow him to stay. Yes, sir. He died. Every night you do not sleep. Yes, sir. No matter how you pray. Because anybody that is in a valley cannot save himself. You need somebody 
who is not involved to help you. Every night, spiritual husband used to mess you up. Help me, daddy, is too much. You can claim anything, but listen to me. When spirits are in your matter, what you claim does not matter. She's an evangelist. But being an evangelist does not stop spiritual husband from messing her up every night. Help me, daddy. If we cover up now, and claim that all is well. If she sleep now, the man will come and mess her up anywhere, anytime. Spiritual husband. I don't know how many women in this hall. I don't know how many women listening to the sound of my voice through the telecast. You're listening to the sound of my voice through any means. Now, if you are suffering from spiritual husband. It takes time to say, deliver me, O God. Spiritual husband does not respect age. Does not respect title. He doesn't let you sleep well. He will come and mess you up. Most times he will mess you up, you wouldn't know how to tell anybody. But you are messed up. Can I speak now? spiritual husband has broken her marriage three times and wants to break the last one and the husband just said to her that this thing is too much each time I sleep with you I will be receiving slap and beating strange hand will slap the man and slap the man when he wake up in the morning he can't stand up body pain what kind of thing is this but any day that man sleep outside his house nobody comes to beat him but immediately sleeps with her that night he will receive the beating of his life the Lord said to me that spiritual husband is disturbing you come Spiritual husband does not respect age. He does not respect who you are. Listen, I'm doing back to the potter. Bible believing mission incorporated the dwelling place of the God of talk and truth. You've gone for all manner of deliverance in different places. They've asked you to go and do sacrifice in the water. When you finish the sacrifice in the water, the thing, the thing triggered. It became like you went to give the man food. The thing became worse. The man that married you before this one, that man saw Pepe because he too was a stubborn man. He went to several native doctors and wanted to shame the spiritual husband. When the native doctor finished, where he left you finally was at the park at Enugu. Because he parked his car at the park. Both of you came down to go and eat at one woman's restaurant at the park. Inside that place, the spiritual husband disgraced him. Broad daylight. Lifted him up. But lifted him up again Boah. people started running he was like a madman a hand is lifting you nobody is seeing the hand they will just see you come up like this another thing is Boah. people didn't know how to help him everybody took race from the park the man said this marriage is over the next thing she saw was that her load we are coming back to her father's house in Ghana must go three Ghana must go loaded and that 
The man said, the bride's price, chop. Don't refund me. But now, my sister, you will know why they talk about us. Listen, when we talk about issues like this, it sounds simple. Because you are not involved. If you are the one involved, you will understand how deep it is. Every woman here, I use this one as point of contact. Now hear me. You will not lose this marriage. Amen. Stop going up and down. Did you hear me? Stop going up and down. Go and tell your elder brother. The reverend father. That's the one I'm talking about. Go and tell him that. It is not about sprinkling of water. He has sprinkled it on you enough. When you told him you were coming to Abba, he gave you the money with which you traveled down. But he said something that I want to reply him. He said to you, I don't believe in those nonsense. Go and tell him eh, that he has a problem. Tell him that Toknadu said that no member of your family know that he's having hynia. A very big one. He's covering it with his white cloth. But he's dying inside. Tell him to come to me. I will cure him of the hynia. is what I said. That I said he should look for a way remove that white and come here. How can he talk and say it's nonsense? Oh yeah now tell him that I also said that where you have been staying with your sister in the last two weeks that I said by Monday one o'clock in the afternoon your husband will drive to your sister's house. He will blow horn. You will come out. He will say, enter, let's go. Thank you, Jesus. Then at that point, your reverend father brother will know that this is more than nonsense. That this is sense. Somebody holla. spiritual husband took away from you anything spiritual husband took away from your family the Lord will restore it to you there are some things I don't want to say but spiritual husband is not a good thing let me not say some things but spiritual husband is not good the Lord will deliver all of you from it in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody hala settle. Hala settle. Your case is simple. I'm going to give you a solution in one minute. You and your husband adopted a child four years ago because you cannot conceive. Eh? You've tried everything and it's not working. Mm -hmm. If I tell you what to do, will you do it? Yes, sir. When you get home now, carry that child you adopted. Return it back to the woman that brought the child. Give the child back to them. The child has grown. Give the child back to them. Mm -hmm. Upon my word, tell them you don't want anymore. That God should bless her. She should carry the child go home. If you stay two months and you are not pregnant, I will stop preaching. As long as that baby is in your house, that particular child came from somewhere. That particular child came from somewhere. Return the child and get pregnant. God bless you.
Bible believing mission in the dwelling place of the God of Thor. The death that killed your father too early does not mean well for you. The death that killed your father too early is waiting for you at the junction of 19 which you will be by next month. By next month you will be 19. The death that killed your father is waiting for you on your 19th birthday. Your 19th birthday happened to be your father's birthday. That's a coincidence because the same date that you were born was the date that your father was born. The same date, the same month. And the death that killed your father killed him on his birthday. The same death want to kill you on your birthday. Let me make it clear to you so that you know that I know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about 21st of September. That is your birthday. Yes, sir, it's my birthday. That was your father's birthday. And your father died on the 21st of September 2015. Yeah, go ahead, sir. The same death is waiting for you now next month. Why? Somebody say, Potter, Potter. correct it for me. If this boy at 19 should lose his life, it's a total loss. For this purpose was the Son of Man made manifest to destroy the works of Satan. We shouldn't let him die. Should we? No. We shouldn't let him die. But there's something I'm going to do now. There's something I'm going to do now. Your grandmother, she has buried all her children. Now she's burying her grandchildren. So, on the 21st of September, I exchange your head with her own. Somebody holla. Sit down. Calm your spirit down. Calm your spirit down. I will find them. You came out from the church night video like this. KK blocked you and collected your son from you. Relax, sit down. I will talk. Why are you telling I can't talk now? Do my brother, Anna Manata Moyoji. Etua, this sister not here now. I don't know her. She lives somewhere at a Kapara. That's what God is telling me. I can stand here now. And the other those who took the baby, even though they are at Ungopala now with the child, they can leave Ungopala this night with the Akeke, carrying the baby, running. I have the prophetic capacity. But what have I suffered over the years? A Messiah now, the same person got on around. See that man, okay. Okay, who never had dinner on a rock? Those three boys, what would I know? Rock, lay hands over. Me, you, how much would I know? Rock, lay here. My sister, oh yeah, it's okay. Before we finish in this church, 
And before you will get to your house, you will see your son. You will see your son. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Everybody in this house, say, Father, Father give, me give me something. I will thank you for it. Now, say God of Toknadu. Give, give me Kingsley Innocent. Something. Say God of Toknadu. Give me. I will not disappoint you. Be sure of what you are saying. If you will disappoint, don't talk. Say God of Toknadu. I will not disappoint you. Give me something. I will thank you. Bible believing mission incorporated the dwelling place of the God of Talk and Truth.